Hey everyone, it is Silly Man here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a trampoline in Roblox Studio. So the first thing you want to do is insert a part into your game. So just click on the part icon. I'm going to change the color to a darker gray. I'm going to change the material to smooth plastic. I'm going to anchor it and I'll set the size to 131. And then I'll also center it. So change the position to 000. And then for the middle number, we want to make that half of the middle number of the size. So that's going to be half of three, which is 1.5. So next, what we're going to do is go over to the model tab here. And I'm going to change my move increment to five. Then what we're going to do is click on the move tool, click on the part. And what I'm going to do next is duplicate it. So to do that, you hit control D on your keyboard. And then I'm going to move it back. Then I'm going to duplicate it again by pressing control D and then moving it in front of me. And then we'll also do that to the left and right. So duplicate it and move it to the left and do that to the right as well. So next I'm going to click on the part in the middle and I'm going to go down and change the shape property to cylinder. And then I'm going to change the orientation of the C frame to 0, 0, 090. And then I'm going to change the size to 0 0.5, 12, 12. And then I'm just going to move it up. I'll actually change my studs increment to 0.25. That way I can place it right on top. Then I'm going to change the color of the trampoline to black. And we'll also call it trampoline. So next what we want to do is make the outer part of the trampoline. So to do that, I'm actually going to duplicate the trampoline. I'm just going to move it over. And we're going to change the size of it. So change the 12 to 13. Do it for both of them. And then I'm going to change the color to gray. Then what we're going to do is duplicate this. And then change the size to 1, 11, 11. Then what we're going to do is click on the smaller circle. And then make sure you're on model and then click on negate. And then what we're going to do is select both of the cylinders and then click on union. And this will create a hole in the middle. Then we can just drag this back here. So to make sure it's centered, I'm just going to copy the position of the trampoline and then set that to this part. And so as you can see, it does glitch a little bit. So to fix that, I'm going to click on the trampoline and then I'm going to change the size from 0.5 to 0.49 and that will fix that glitch. All right. So now that we've built our trampoline, it's now time to script it. So go over to starter player then go to start a player scripts and then insert a local script here. So first we're going to say local players equals game get service players because we'll be needing the service to update the players jump when they go on the trampoline. Then we're also going to need a service called starter player. So I'll explain more about that later. So I'm going to say local starter player equals game get service starter player and then we need to get the player object so we're going to say local player equals players dot local player then next we need to make a variable for the trampoline that we created so we're going to say local trampoline equals workspace dot trampoline because as you can see the trampoline is inside of the workspace so we just say workspace dot trampoline and then next what we're going to do is create a variable for the amount of jump power that the trampoline is going to give us. So I'm going to say local jump underscore distance equals 40. The next I'm going to create an event uh, which will fire whenever the trampoline is touched. So we're going to say trampoline dot touched connect function hit. The next we need to make sure that what touched the trampoline was actually a player and not some other object. So to do that, we can say if hit dot parent doesn't equal player dot character then return so what this code does is it checks to see if what touched the trampoline was the player and if it wasn't a player it just returns so any code that we write underneath this here uh, won't run if what touched the trampoline wasn't a player so next we're going to say local humanoid because this assumes so any code we write here assumes that uh, what touched the trampoline was the player so we're going to say local humanoid equals player dot character find first child humanoid 
And then we're going to make sure that the player is actually alive. So we're going to say if humanoid and humanoid. And, and the reason we say if humanoid is because we want to make sure that the humanoid object exists inside of the player. And then we're going to say humanoid dot health is greater than zero. This will check to make sure that the player is still alive. Then we're going to say humanoid dot jump height equals jump underscore distance. So what this will do is it will set the player's jump height to uh, 40 because we set that as the jump distance. So the default jump height of a player is 7.2. So if you actually go to start a player, you can actually see that the default character jump height is 7.2 right here. And you can actually change this if you want, but by default, it is 7.2 studs. So then what we're going to do here is we're going to wait 0.1 seconds. And then we're going to make we're going to force the player to jump. So we're going to say humanoid dot jump equals true. And then we're going to wait half a second. And then we're going to set the player's jump height back to normal. So we're going to say humanoid dot jump height equals. And then we actually want to set it to the value here because if we decide to change this, then it will also, the script will also re reflect that. So we're going to say starter player dot and then the uh, property name. So that's going to be character jump height. So now the last thing we're going to do is add a debounce. And so a debounce is just going to help uh, prevent any glitches uh, with the touched event. So we're going to say local debounce equals false. Then we're going to come over here and say and not debounce. And then say debounce equals true. And then at the end, we're going to set it back to false. And this will just prevent any glitches uh, when the player touches the trampoline. So now if I go ahead and hit play, you can see that the trampoline works. If I go on it, it makes me jump. And that is how you make a trampoline in Roblox Studio. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, and I will see you all in the next video.